more top income earners in Jeunesse, or basically any of the top income earners in the industry uh, globally, they are all global network marketers. Now what I love about these two guys I'm going to introduce in just one second is that they're two of my best friends, uh, two of the very first people I enrolled in the Jeunesse, and they're two guys that embrace getting out of their comfort zone. This company in Jeunesse was the very first company where they joined, where they earned a level of income that they could really boast about. Now, for them getting out of their comfort zone, they've always embraced finding opportunities to build globally around the world. And they've been able to enrol some fantastic people in other countries. I think right now, as it stands, they have a team of distributors within their organization who's well into six figures. They have business, I believe, in over 60 countries all around the world. Virtually every second or third month, they're traveling to some new country around the world, building their business, taking a shot, but they're making it work. So guys, we've got two incredible experts to teach you how you can build successfully uh, internationally and globally. So let's give it up for Craig Schultz and Aaron Biden. <laughs> Just in China alone now, there's more middle class there than the whole population of the US. Okay, it didn't used to be that way. So now we have this new age, this new world of network marketing at our fingertips, and we can build a business faster, stronger, all around the world from the comfort of our own home, rather than a small local business. And if you think about a perfect example of that, when somebody says to you, you know what, sounds great, and that sounds pretty good, I'd love more information, what do you send them, or how do you send it to them? Uh, internet, yeah, text them maybe. Basically, copy and paste the link, send them some information. What do we used to do maybe a decade or two ago? You put your little brochure of Jeunesse in an envelope, you put it in the mail, seven days later they get your brochure and they call you back on a landline. Think about how slow that was. There's people under 25 here going, what's a landline? <laughs> we used to have these things called landline. You dialed them and they came back. And so it's this new age of business, uh, but we want to start local. So yeah, it's really important, you don't just fall into the trap, you've been to this presentation from Aaron and I and you just go, I'm now going to do a global business. You have to think like that, but it's really important to get your business off 
to a great start. And often a great start focusing on your warm market, and nine times out of ten we see a warm market is a local market. And some of the great reasons to go into that local market, it's very easy to do because you can travel there, you can meet people face to face. It's a lot more cost effective. But we always say make sure that you start your business with a warm market. Now I always look at the way uh, people are coming through on their journey. And most people can get to that sapphire level in, the, in their local sort of market, so going out doing meetings, etc., etc. But if you really do want to get up to those director levels, those diamond director levels in Jeunesse, you really do need to think and utilise this global platform and make sure that you are constantly building your list and uh, building rapport with people all around the world, but you do want to take it to an international level. So let's go into a little bit more detail about what I spoke about at the start. You know, why do we want it? Why is it important? Diversification. I mean, if something were to happen, you know, cross our fingers that it doesn't in North America, you'd want to be okay because you've got a huge business in Australia. You know, network marketing for some reason didn't work in Australia one day. I want to know that my business is still strong because I've got a huge business in America or Russia or Brazil. Does that make sense? We want to diversify our portfolio, so to speak, globally. Um, you look at the excitement of waking up in the morning and seeing the productivity in your business as you're sleeping. You know, you don't want to just be seeing the commissions and the cycles tick over during the day just because you've got a business just in the US or just in Australia. Okay, so that's a really exciting part of it. You know, it is a new age world and it's just faster to build it globally. I mean, we, I don't want to build just a business in Australia with 20 million people. In New Zealand, even less than that. You know, I want to build a global business with hundreds of millions of people that are at our fingertips for our products and our business opportunity. So your business will just grow faster. I mean, these products are accepted all over the world. That's the great thing we have here with Jeanette. There's not many companies. In fact, you won't find a six-year-old company opening about 130 countries. It just doesn't exist. But to find product that doesn't matter what language you speak, say, I want that. You know, you can show someone a completely different language, doesn't speak English, a before and after photo, and they'll say, get me a tub of that stuff immediately. Now, we just had weight loss in our network marketing company. Would we do very well in the Asian marketplace? We probably wouldn't. You know, there's not a big obesity problem there. So our products talk to people in every single country around the world. That's why you don't want to miss out on the opportunity that we have at hand here with us right now. You know, if we look at Europe's growth at the moment, you know, Europe's going to be going through the roof over the next few years. There's another billion dollars in sales. Brazil, India, you know, Amway will do one billion dollars in sales in just India alone this year for 2016. Now, Jeunesse will open up there sometime in the next year or so. So you can see Jeunesse becoming this multi-billion dollar company. We don't want to miss out on that moment in time. You know, the fastest company to ever to reach $1 billion. Is that pretty exciting? Yes. So guys, your time to work hard in this business is right now. You'll never see the opportunity that we have ever again. And you want that new age business. You know, if we look at the social media aspect, that's what excites me. You know, when I first looked at network marketing, it was in the early 2000s. I didn't even have a Facebook account. So I couldn't put a before and after picture up on Facebook. Webinars weren't working, there was no webinar platform because the internet speed wasn't fast enough. So the old school network marketing will always work. It's a people business. It's a relationship business. Okay, It's a like and a trust and a friendship business. But we can now take that all around the world through a YouTube video, for example. So people, by the time you phone them up or net with them, they've already said, yep, I've watched 10 of your videos, i made up my mind that I like you, I like the value that you put in, I like the way you talk, I like your personality, I even get to know your family on Facebook, they're just about ready to join. So the business will always be a relationship business, but we can take that all around the world now with social media. So this perfect storm of events that's happening is just so exciting that we can build that rapport globally online. And look, we want to travel the world and, and meet great people and have fun, don't we? That's what it's all about. Now, if anyone's got their phone not on silent, and we whack that on silent, that would be totally awesome. Someone's getting lots of text messages. So that's what we love to do. You know, we love to find good people and then we match energy with energy. You know, so we've got a great team from the UK here today. We travel to the UK. We've got a great team in the Philippines, so we travel to the Philippines. And I'm going to talk a little bit about in my, one of my next slides, when do you travel 
for your international business. When do you go interstate? When do you go international? But I hope that makes sense of the importance of having the global business today. So Aaron touched on this at the start. We started local business. We encourage everyone in the business. So it was 10 people we knew locally to kick off the business. But just have a look at the broader picture of what's happened here. So we personally enrolled over 130 people. You know, and there, there's only 10 of those that have an international sort of, they're from other countries. So you think less than 10% of our personal sponsorships has come on from international. But we now have business in over 90 countries and over 100,000 people that are consuming the product from all around the world. And we have this best work practice philosophy. So we set people up the right day, uh, the right way, get them started, and then we make sure that this can be perfectly duplicated. And that's how we've reached out to people all around the world. I recently did a presentation to our leaders in Australia, and I was talking about one enrolment can change absolutely everything, following a best work practice, helping them get started the right way, and then they can help someone get started the right way, and this can go on um, to infinity levels. Now, I pulled four um, different distributors out of that and gave that example of how we've been able to go international through these four distributors to create that 100,000 plus distributors. Those four leaders are now all in their direct levels on their own journey to the business, but three of those leaders were actually local leaders that we met and we knew through our warm market in Australia. There was one international leader, but that but through four people, over 100,000 people all around the world, in many, many countries. As uh, Linda mentioned at the start, we spend a lot of time traveling Aaron's going to talk about when to go to different markets to build your business, but it's so exciting with this international platform, what can actually happen? So, I get a lot of people say to me, I've got someone to enroll overseas, I've got someone to enroll in Thailand, China, Canada, how do I enroll them, how do I train these people? And my answer is always the same way you train your next door neighbour. You know, international people or people interstate aren't aliens. You know, they're not different human beings. They're just human beings, and network marketing will work in every single country all around the world. Now, there's certain markets you perhaps want to target. I'll talk a bit about that later. But network marketing will work in every single country around the world if you can find the right what? The right leaders, exactly. So if you can find the right leader with the right mindset, it doesn't matter how much shipping will cost, it doesn't matter how much the product will cost, it doesn't matter that they don't have a local upline, they'll go and do it anyway. So when we started in Australia, you know, we had three products, no marketing materials. We paid US shipping. We paid US dollars. Was that a lot harder to build the business? You bet it was. You know, customers weren't really reaching out to pay $80 in shipping for a syrup from the US. So we started talking to the visionary people that could see the benefit of starting early. And we didn't care that we didn't have an upline in Australia. You know, we went and created our own live events. We went and created our own social media. We went and created our own webinars. We created our own system and we went to work. You know, we built it from 60, 100,000 a month, you know, up to a million dollars a month. Uh, so they put infrastructure there for us. Now we've got a general manager, local shipping, local dollars. And so it was worth doing that. Okay, now in Australia we do over $5 million every month in sales. So they're the type of people that you're looking for when you're looking to go international. You're looking for those leaders. But do it exactly the same. So hopefully you guys have a great system in place where you're running opportunity webinars, you're running opportunity training webinars, you're doing live events. You may have a Facebook group for your team where you communicate, maybe an email platform. You really want to keep your business model simple. You know, that's how you'll duplicate. Keep it really, really simple. So when you enroll someone in Nigeria, do exactly the same thing, okay? Do the same getting started training, do the exactly same training you do with someone locally, get them to create their own live events like you're creating here, and say, hey, if you do X, Y, and Z, I'll come over and support you. In the meantime, the best you can do is just communicate through you know, Facebook, through Skype, through WhatsApp, you know, we're gonna go through some tools in a second, but do it exactly the same. Don't change your system just because they're overseas. Now, there's a few, there's different cultural differences, yes. Maybe some countries have different products. We'll go through a little bit about that in a second. But the point I want to get across is whatever's working for you here, okay, you do the same everywhere. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so if you've got someone who enrolled in Thailand, just click the Thailand downline 
uh, drop down button and, and enroll them in Thailand and then do this thing getting started training. Okay, now if you have to speak different languages, there's ways that we can get around that as well. We'll talk about that in a second. And one key thing that I, I would encourage you, if you're going to plan to go out there into that cold market, you need to set a default of the person that you're looking for to be a lot higher. And what I mean by that is they're more entrepreneurial. They're more, they've got that go-getting thing. They could build a business without you being beside them, side by side. You know, you can pick up the phone, you can provide your coaching and your support using the tools that we have at our fingertips now. But if you want to go out there, you really do need to make sure you're looking for that better qualified person, that better quality person. Because I've seen some real horror stories through people in my teams that have gone, Craig, I've got someone interested in the Philippines. And then I'll see them at a meeting two or three um, months later and they say, guess what, they signed up. I said, oh, that's great. I'll, I'll be over there in a couple of months. Make sure that they come to the meeting. What package did they buy? I just bought a serum. And so they've spent all that time in you know, chasing this person and they finally decided to join. And what, they, what did they do? They were a customer that um, and just bought a serum. So it's really important that you do qualify people. I'm going to be talking about that in more detail, but if you're going out there to build an international business, I set my default in. They will be able to get to Sapphire without me providing that support for them, you know, in a face-to-face in -face approach. So make sure if it's cold market, if it's warm market, same training and that obviously applies, but you know, you enroll anyone at any time, but if you're starting to build that international now, make sure that their quality level is a lot higher. So it's awesome to uh, pick the right target markets as well. Remember I said this will work in any single country as long as you find the right leaders, and it's true. Okay, Jeunesse is in 120, 130 markets, so you've got some great um, different countries to build in there. And look, go wherever the energy goes. So if you're prospecting on social media, target the right people rather than targeting the right countries. But, you know, is it, if you're going to be spending your time doing that, some countries do work better than others. So in Vietnam, for example, is a very big challenge to build, you know, GS business at the moment. We don't have an office set up there. You know, Vietnam, the you know, average dollar that they make is, is low. So the products are very, very expensive for them. It's a hard country to build. But again, you find the right leaders, you know, the right Craig, the right Linden in Vietnam, it will it will work. But when I spend my time, like when I sat down with Wendy Lewis yesterday, I said, okay, Europe's exploding. Which countries are getting set up correctly? Which countries are going to have a general manager, local product, product registration, an office? And she talked about France and Italy and Germany. So they're the areas that I would concentrate on if I was looking for European leaders in those areas. Because I know there's a better chance of that person succeeding because they can go and have a meeting in the office with the general manager. If there's a language barrier, they can take their people to meet the general manager and they can talk in that language that I can't. So they're the countries that I'm going to be focusing on. Does that make sense? Yeah. So start to have a look at, okay, where are the offices that we've got located? Where are the general managers? Where does network marketing work well? But in the back of your mind, also be thinking, I know this will work anywhere as long as I find the right leaders. Okay, so that, that helps you balance where you spend your time, how you prospect internationally, where you put your energy as well. It's really important to get your timing right. When Brazil opened up, there were so many leaders that went over to Brazil, spent tens of thousands of dollars on marketing, on travel, on leaders over there. But I said, there's no way I'm going over to Brazil. I know it'll be an absolute headache, and it was. You know, they spent so much money, and most of the people they enrolled have gone now because product wasn't registered. So you know, they had the old product there, they had meetings, they got high, and then they thought, okay, we're going to launch in January. Okay, now we're going to launch in March. Now we're going to launch in April. And so I always stand back a little bit when a new country gets launched, wait for it to be set up correctly, and then go in and find those leaders. I find it works a lot better. So your timing is really important as well. Just get smart about how you build their businesses. So one of the real key things becoming this best work practice, this better networker, is to improve your knowledge in all areas. Whether it's learning more about network marketing, whether it's learning more about Jeunesse, continue to learn and continue to grow, you'll get better as a networker. So the same applies to this international um, building a network. So if I was going to approach someone in France, the first thing I do is I click on join now and go through an enrollment process to find out on that sign up page what packages they have, what surprises, is it in local currency, find out a bit about the shipping. So I would do a, what I call a, a mock enrollment to make sure that I have better understanding because there's no point 
prospecting someone in a different country and the products are not there. The products that they might you might be you might love here in the US, but they may not be available um, in Australia, for example. So make sure that you do that research first. It's really, really important. It's something that people do uh, fall over quickly where they actually bring up their own objection for going to speak to someone in, say, a different country and that product's not there. They've led down that path talking about how amazing a and PM is. They go to enrol them and it's not even in the shopping cart. You know, that happens all the time. So be smart. Be professional. Make sure that you sign, you pretend to sign someone up and have a look at everything first. That knowledge in, needs to improve in other areas. Understand different cultures. You know, I've built a business in Mexico before and everyone that I come across, they didn't speak English and I certainly don't speak Spanish, I barely speak English. And, um, and, 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 <laughs> that was hard, you know. I've had uh, had to have a translator on all the time. You know, the best way we could communicate was um, through chat box because they wrote uh, they wrote English well, and I didn't do that either. But um, you know, it's really important that you do understand different cultures and also different companies. You know, for me, being a professional network, if I wanted to build a business in a different country, I might actually go onto Google and research what companies are there. In, in that market and find out, you know, and then start looking for, for leaders like that too. So it's really important that you do improve your knowledge if you want to become a big networker in this industry. You guys enjoy this? Yes. Yeah. Get something out of it? Yes. yes. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. So hands up if you've travelled anywhere for your business, even if it's across town locally. Hands up. Okay. Who's travelled interstate? Awesome. Who's travelled internationally? Okay. Quite cool. Well done. So tell me if you've had this experience. You get a leader on and leader on board, and they're going to tell you, I'm going to get 100 people in the room. Piece of cake. I'll get hundreds of people in the room every single time I build my business. I've done this. I've done that. I'm this good. Everyone loves me. I've got a huge network. And you're so excited. You go, yes, I can't wait to fly from the US to New Zealand and put on this launch for my brand new leader over there in New Zealand, and then this happens. <laughs> Anyone had that experience? So you don't want that to happen, okay? And the way that we do our best to make sure that doesn't happen is we qualify our leaders really, really well. We make them jump through a lot of hoops before we jump on that aeroplane. Because, you know, if you're going to fly from the US to New Zealand, that's probably going to cost you $1,500, $2,000. Yeah, you've got accommodation costs, you've got food, everything I see. It might cost you $3,000 to go over there and back. Now, if this happens, is that a good use of your time or your money? Absolutely not. I know other people that have spent tens of thousands of dollars on opening new markets exactly the same way. And I remember asking Kim Wee this question when I first started in Jeunesse. When do I jump on a plane and, and work with those people? And they say, when they show you that you should jump on an aeroplane. So now what we do is if they've quickly enrolled 10 people, if they've enrolled 20 people, if they've enrolled 30 people, now you have our attention. And that's not to say we completely ignore them until they do something. You know, we're working with them on a daily basis. Okay, on the telephone, on text, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Skype. All the time we're working with them and training them. But talking is one thing, doing is another. And so if they do go and enrol that many people, they're like, hey, this person has some talent, we're over there. Let's go and do some live events, let's do some one-on-ones. Let's come over and help you out. And that's what we do. So that's why we fly to the Philippines every 90 days because you know we've got a, a distributor there, a level one, that'll probably go Emerald this month. Is it worth us going over there for her? Absolutely. You know, that's why we go to South Africa um, every three or four months because we have a great team there. That's why we travel with the US and Denmark and Europe because these guys are going to Pearl to Sapphire to Sapphire Elite, 20, 30, 40, 50 enrollments. It's worth our time and our money to invest into those people. Does that make sense? But I also do that on a micro level as well. So I don't even get in my car and drive to the next street if someone hasn't qualified for my time. And so when I'm talking to them on the telephone, you know, I'll say, hey, you know, what are your goals in Jeunesse? Well done for signing up. You know, what do you want to get out of it? And they say, oh, look, I don't even know whether I really do much. I'm not even sure this will work. I might dabble around it on the weekends, but I'd love to catch up with you, you know, for an hour tomorrow if you're free. Okay, I'm not getting in my car driving across county peak hour traffic to meet with that person yet. And neither do you. Okay, your time is precious. You've only got a certain amount of time that you're spending per day and per week in your business. 
it's okay, don't go and drive across town and pick our traffic to that person. Okay, you can talk to them on the phone and answer their questions on the telephone. Okay, the chance of that person rocking up at the meeting might not even be great. Okay, if someone says to you, Aaron, I'm really serious about this business, I'm going to put in 15 hours per week, my goal is to be a Ruby by the end of the year, you know, I'm really taking this seriously, I've done a bit of marketing before, you know, I made six figures in my last company, can we catch up? You want to get in that car and you want to speed down the other end of the street across town and meet that person. You see the difference? Okay, so you've got to be smart and qualifying your time and qualifying your leaders on when you drive across town, when you fly into state, and especially when you're building internationally. Does that make sense? So that was the answer that Kim Wee gave, and it made total sense to me, and we've been able to build a really big global business, you know, without wasting much money at all. You know, even if we look at this weekend, our living being off is sleeping in a rollaway bed at the end of our room to save some money. So it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. So there we go. So I guess this is pretty straightforward. This, uh, if you're building a, a business with Jeunesse, local and international, event promotion is your number one strategy. I, I always try to see, see the bigger picture at these amazing live events. You know, my whole focus for the US is to get as many people from my team here so they can see when you speak, they can see Scott speak. You, know, you want to plan your whole calendar and your entire business strategy in terms of growth and momentum off event, off event, off event. So at the start of the year, I want to find out when the international convention is, I want to find out when my uh, Philippine team's major events are, I want to find out where the, uh, the European universities are because I want to build there, and I plan absolutely everything around that. Same applies, when you're building your international business, find out where that international convention is and start prospecting in that market. So this year, we're going to be in Orlando um, for our major event later in the year. And for me, I want to build towards that event. So I'm really going out there, I'm promoting, I want to get as many local people as I possibly can there. And again, it saves time. Last year, the Singapore Convention, I had a team there. I had all my leaders that I was working with, and I said, look, let's get as many people as we can to that event. So I travelled over there five days early, ran a couple of local opportunity events to try and get more people interested, and then travelled to some other Asian markets around it. Very cost effective. Aaron was talking about the expense of the international business and the flights, the time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you're already going there for that international business, you've already you've got you're spending that money anyway. So you can like, save a lot of money by planning around these events. You often see Aaron, Linda, myself, if you, if you follow us on Facebook, we do lots of tours because it's such a long way to travel to go to you know, our international markets. It's 24 hours on a plane to get to Europe. It's 14, 15 hours to get to here. So we don't want to just go over for a day or two. We go and structure everything we do around these events. It's smart networking and you'll be able to build a better international business. I pretty much covered this point in my last bit, but I want to really reiterate that, you know, you want to be holding hands with your new person for 90 days, okay? It's not just like, hey, why don't I sign up now, show me, show me what you can do. It's not about that. So we take them through the getting started training. My rule of thumb is that I hold their hands, I link arms with that person for the first 90 days, and then I match energy with energy after that. I want to show them, teach them, be with them every step of the way. Launch their business, meet people one on one for them, do three way phone calls. Okay, if they're doing all of the activities, if they're enrolling people, if they're serious about their business, then I'm going to continue to match that energy with energy. But if they're not returning calls, if they're not enrolling people, if they're not turning up to live events, then it's hey, I'm going to be here for you, you let me know when you're serious about your business. Okay, if I'm prospecting people, okay, and they're telling me how good they've done, then I'll be asking them a series of qualifying questions to see, okay, am I going to drive across town? Am I going to jump on a plane? Am I going to follow this person up every day? Or am I going to follow this person up maybe once every month or two? I just enrolled a really big um, ex-network marketer in Sydney in Australia, and I looked through their Facebook, I looked at their resume, I Googled them, and they were, they were big time, they were the real deal. So do you think I followed them up every 90 days or every 90 seconds? <laughs> I followed them up every day. And eventually I enrolled them after about three months. And they've gone on to put 100 people, uh, 100 personal enrollments in their first month or two. They've gone Sapphire Elite in just that first few months. And when I first enrolled them, there was about 10 other people that said, ah, I've been prospecting that person. They're supposed to be my person. I said, oh, great. When was the last time you chatted to them? About like two years ago. Okay, how often did you follow up? Never. 
Okay, so you're not going to enrol people who are following up never or every 90 days. You know, someone that I've asked a qualifying questions to that perhaps I don't think is you know, a big leader, I might only follow up with once a month. Hey, is now a better time to get you enrolled? So you, you want to be asking those qualifying questions uh, just to be a smart networker about where you spend your time, how often you follow up, how often you meet with them. Um, but again, it's not deserting everybody. You're there for your team, you're doing the getting started training, but your job is to match energy with energy. You can't motivate your team. Okay, you cannot motivate anybody. Okay, you're looking for motivated people. Okay, you might be able to motivate someone for a day or two, but then they'll go back to whatever their internal motivation is, whatever their why is, how big their why is. You can't give them their why. You can't give them your dreams and goals. You're looking for people that their why is so big, they'll do whatever it takes. Because this business is hard, yeah? We're dealing with human beings. Now, I wish we weren't. I wish it was like training monkeys or something, because it'd be easier. But human beings have emotions and personal lives. That's tough. Okay? And so you'll go through an up and down business model. Okay? If your why's big enough, the downs don't matter. Okay? You'll be able to get over them. They're the people you're looking for, and if you get enough of them, you won't have time to try and raise the dead of the people that aren't doing anything, because all your motivated people will be ringing you every single day. Does that make sense? Cool. So you're now going out and building a global business. Here's to give you a few ideas. A lot of people say, hey, how do you find these people? Where are they? Like, you know, so I always say, if you're going into your um, cold market, which is obviously hard, it takes a lot more time, but you are looking for that more quality person, go and start Googling. Network marketing leader, Las Vegas, you know, and see who comes up. Network marketing leader, uh, Philippines, Makaki, or where, wherever it is, to make sure that, you know, you start in, improving your social network, become that better network. But in regards to the war market, why don't you ask for referrals? You know, go and ask one of your friends who decided not to join, say, you know what, you've been to France a few times. Did you meet anyone over there that might be interested in looking at this information? Now, because you're an information broker, so go and ask for referrals all the time. That's the smart <coughs> networking. Then you've got leaders in your business, and they may have good networks in other international markets. So you might start working with them and teaching them to ask for referrals in their, their market as well. So that's, that's more of a warm market type of strategy. But you've got someone interested. Here's some, Alex talked a lot about this qualifying, making sure that they're the right person. Very important to build relationships. And to build relationships, you need to pick up the phone so they can hear your voice. They know that you're a real person. Also, take it to the next level. Get it, use the technology that we have at our fingertips, like Skype, Zoom, all these different webinar platforms, people that can see you. You know, that relationship will grow um, a lot more. As Aaron mentioned, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. You know, you really do need to show that you care and you are serious about your business. If someone prospects me and I have a good conversation with them and they don't come back to me in 90 days, I actually think that they're not real serious about their business. So make sure that you're serious about your business. And then we talk about matching the energy with energy. Go where the leaders are. You know, work with the leaders. You know, if those four people that start, that are all directors in the business now, is now 100,000. Right? So I've focused on my leaders to help them grow. Always got to be continuing to prospect and find new people yourself, but you work hard with the people that are showing and, and justifying your time. Yes, yeah, so if we look at our sapphire legs in our business, three quarters of our sapphire legs have come from relationships. Either people that we knew in our rural market or through asking someone that we knew for referrals. Some form of a relationship is three quarters of our sapphire legs. Does that tell you something? Okay, it's hard to cold prospect, isn't it? Complete strangers because the relationship isn't there, which means the trust isn't there. Okay, that's everything in network marketing. So once you've gone through your rural market list, then a lot of people say, well, now how do I prospect and enroll people when I don't have the relationship? So we can now, again, going back to the technology, social media, we can create a global warm market list of people that know us, trust us, like us. You still got to pick up the phone and talk to those people. Okay, they're not just going to go, oh, I really like a YouTube video, there's your website, click join, ambassador pack, I'm on auto ship, and I'll go and enroll 100 people straight away. That's not going to happen. Okay, you still have to communicate, prospect, and talk to those people. But, you know, hands up if anyone's doing videos and putting them up online at the moment. 
Okay, get into that. You know, they're not hard. Turn your phone around, do a video, and upload it. Very, very simple today. If you're not sure how to do it, get one of your kids to show you. Everyone knows how to do it. They are, right? They're great kids or something. They know how to do it. But start doing videos because it's the old school model, new age. Yes. Okay, it's relationships, it's life, it's trust. You know, they go, oh, that's what your house looks like, that's what your kids look like, that's what your husband looks like, that's what your wife looks like. Oh, I like the way you talk. And add value to people's day. So it's not all about join me, join me, join me, Janessa is the best. Be curious. Okay, do curious videos where people go, geez, I don't know what they're doing, but it sounds pretty good. I don't know, and then, so they've got to contact you, and you can then tell them it's Janessa in Network Marketing. Hey, come and have a look at some information. So try and add value. So what you can do is jump on a training webinar, jump on an Eric Warray MP3 or something, learn something, and then go and do a video about it. Is that pretty simple? And if you do that consistently enough, put it up on YouTube with a title, Okay, people are going to start to be drawn to you. They're going to subscribe to your YouTube channel. You're going to grow a global, warm marketplace. Maybe create a Facebook group called <coughs> Entrepreneurs USA or whatever. You know, something that's going to attract customers or business builders where you can start to add value to their day through a Facebook group. Okay, a YouTube channel, whatever. Facebook page, uh, LinkedIn profile, uh, Periscope following. There's lots of ways now that you can sit in your home and have a global following. Okay, so we can teach you that as well. So that's when I look at relationships, you know, you can do it uh, locally, going to networking events as well. So I always think about where are the people that I want to enroll hang out. Okay, they're not hanging out at the pub, they're hanging out at real estate investing courses, share, trade, you know, personal development, network marketing events, internet marketing events, anywhere where people are wanting to get ahead in life. They're the people that I want to be rolling in my business. So I'm going to start going to those events, swapping business cards, doing relationships, but also doing it on a global scale as well. And that's how you can get a lot of traction with some really good people very, very quickly. So to help you out a little bit more in regards to building your international business, here's some ideas for some of the tools that may help and assist while you're going out there and building a business. Most people may or may already be using these, but you know, most people today have heard of Skype before. Has everyone heard of Skype? Yeah. You know, here, that's an amazing tool because you can do video, you can text, um, it's easy to communicate, but I always upgrade to the Skype premium level. The Skype premium level will allow you to do more group chats. It'll allow you to uh, call a uh, direct cell phone. So it gives you a few extra features that will help you with your international business. Now here's some other tools. Google Translate. We're talking about speaking different languages now. There's a great app out there where you can talk into it and you can spit out whatever country language it, that you want to. Now, webinar platforms, in today's economy, you are building the new age way. So you've got these live events, but you've also got these webinars happening as well. So make sure that you've introduced a webinar system into your business. Make sure that you do get that, go back to the knowledge, know who the, the, the country manager is, know the, where the offices are. WhatsApp, it's a great texting type of platform. So when we go to an international convention, we will set up a, a group. So it might be Singapore Convention Group, all our team gets in there and we communicate so we know where each other, other is. Uh, WeChat's another version. That's Skyscan. Skyscan is, I guess, our um, planner in terms of to find out what flights we can take at the cheapest rates, the quickest way to get there. So Skyscanner is an amazing tool that can save you thousands of dollars on your travel schedule. You look at uh, World Clock, you know, World Clock also, you need to, you work in so many different time zones, it's often hard to remember where, you know, what day and night in each country. I fell into this when I first started networking. I wanted to build a business in America. I rang this guy up. I hope he's not in the room. It was 4 a.m. over here. And he, he just basically said, who the hell is this? And he hung up the phone on me. But I was actually sitting there going, oh, yeah, different time zone. But, you know, that's what happens. So many people try and book three-way calls with me, and they don't actually mirror the time up. And that, that call falls over and you look unprofessional. So make sure that you implement that. Currency converter, you know, going into countries, you need to know what currency and what 
value and what money you need to change, have an international phone plan. If you don't have an international phone plan, it's very really expensive to have here, but my phone plan in Australia, I can call um, internationally all the time at my moment. So, and when I travel, I keep, keep the same number. I pay a little bit more for that, but it's worth it because I travel so much. But that's where Skype Premium can really help out if you don't want to spend the money on an international phone plan. Also, understand you know how different tools, so when there's new videos, there's new platform that Jeunesse New Marketing are launching that you actually have your finger on, all right? So make sure that there's some tools that can really help you out. You just missed one tool there, Craig. Uh, so if anyone needs help building internationally, <laughs> Craig Chips is your man, one of the biggest fools that I've ever met in my life. <laughs> His Facebook contact details, I snuck this slide in last night, mate, when you were sleeping, so I didn't know about it. Craig was supposed to close the speech, I just thought I'd throw this one in. But yeah, grab his phone number, he's a massive tool, he'll be able to help you more than the business. Thanks a lot, everyone.